I'm a little surprised you didn't want to have the superpower of being other people's consciousness, but I guess. Yeah, you. but that messed you up, though, because people, man, listen, one thing I learned, <laughs> when people are honest, man, honesty <laughs> don't always feel good. I'd be like, lie to me a little bit. What's up, everybody? It's me, E-Man, from E-Man's Movie Reviews. Netflix has a brand new movie coming out called Project Power, starring Jamie Foxx, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Dominique Fishback. The film is about a former soldier teaming up with a cop to find the source behind a dangerous pill that gives people temporary superpowers. I recently had a chance to talk to the stars of Project Power to discuss the film and more. Check it out. Dominique. Jamie, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, we really appreciate it. I'm a little surprised you didn't want to have the superpower of being other people's consciousness, but I guess Yeah, but that you, messed you up, though, because people, man, listen, one thing I learned, <laughs> when people are honest, man, honesty <laughs> don't always feel good. I'd be like, lie to me a little bit. <laughs> you know, by the head, and they'd be like, oh, that's how you, oh, that's how you really think? Mm -hmm. So um, I did want to just expand a little bit on the last question. Um, there is a bit of a sci-fi element, you know, to this film with the drug usage, but there's also that real life component about exploiting uh, populations of a vulnerable, you know, inner city and so on and so forth. So I'm curious, um, what are both of your thoughts on if that power pill were actually real and what impact do you think it would have on the current climate of racial injustice? Mm. Jamie, if you can go first and then Dominique. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's an incredible question, man. You would hope that that, that power would, would, would to be able to straighten things out. I think, I think that if, if, if I had that power, my power would to be able to take my vision and let you see it from my perspective. The problem is, is that no one is looking or no one tries to see from what your perspective is. I think that what we're dealing with now is like uh, that eight minutes and 46 seconds uh, was a, that was an, that was God bless, God bless, you know, him and his family, George Floyd and his family, but it, but it also did something that I think we will forever be changed because people got a chance to see through our eyes. I think that's the, 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 the key to everything, the key to everyone, anyone who's crying out, regardless of color, race, gender, whatever it is, the person is quiet, crying out. If you're able to see what, what they feel, if you're able to feel what they feel, that's the, that's the best power of, of all. Yeah, I, I second that. Dominique, uh, a lot of them rhymes in the movie. Were, the, were you spitting those off the dome for real? or? Uh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> um, it, was, it was Chica, the rap artist Chica. She wrote, okay. she was in the, the classroom scene with us. Like, mm. She's the one who beatboxed and like, she's going to rap. So uh, she wrote all of the raps that Robin does in the movie. But I will say, when I first got the audition, I'm a spoken word poet, so I was like, maybe I'm going to have to tweak and fix this a little something. But then they mm. said Chica... It said Chica was coming on, so I, I left it to the rapper. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, I got a chance to talk to uh, Jamie and Dominique earlier. And um, for Joe, I, I, I asked this question to Jamie, and I'm very curious to your response here. What are your thoughts on if that power pill were actually real and what impact do you think it would have in today's climate with social injustice? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. It it, it generalizes a lot, right? Because I, I take the pill as sort of a metaphor for technology that and there's there's so much powerful technology and it's coming more and more every day. And in a way that technology can help with progress and it can move the human race forward. And, you know, maybe there's an example you could make with how people are communicating around uh, around the protests today and, and raising voices and trying to affect political change. There are also downsides to some of the, you know, the powerful technology that's that's coming around and, and those same technologies that are fueling the protests in, in a certain way have been shown to help extremists, to help bigotry, to, you know, help authoritarians. And um, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, Donald Trump won when he's by far getting more traction on Facebook than than Clinton was, you know, and, and so, and you can see it all over the world where social media is being leveraged by, um, by authoritarian. So anyway, that's just something that, that I think about a lot, but it, 
as far as the pill being a metaphor for technology, it's it's always, I think, a question whenever there's a new powerful technology, like how is this technology going to be used? Is it going to be used to help? Is it going to be used to harm? And or is it going to really benefit everybody or is it just going to make a lot of money for a few people? And these are the questions that, you know, do underlie this movie. Look, in a lot of ways, this movie's a popcorn movie. You can just have fun watching. But if you want to, you, you can really find some of these questions and it can spark these kinds of conversations. You know what? Let's let's run with that a little bit more, if you don't mind, because you've played a police officer in multiple roles in other genres. And your character in the film, I got to be a little honest, kind of gave me a little bit of pause. Mm -hmm. Um, So if this pill were real, how would you feel if police officers really were taking superhero pills to fight crime? Yeah, I mean, well, police officers are armed in incredibly powerful ways, arguably a lot more than they need to be. I'm not not an expert, but it it is just as a, a layman seeing seeing the kind of militaristic technology that that police are equipped with nowadays does seem excessive to me and it's just that's again like is technology being used to help or is technology being used to harm and i uh i <laughs> I would not feel comfortable, no, with with police officers using this pill <laughs> to to fight crime. I would I would think that probably a lot of the the solutions that are needed um, aren't going to be solved with more violence or you know more um, brute strength. Like there's probably other ways to try to address a lot of the the things that that cops are being asked to address nowadays. Dominique, did you want to weigh in on that? Um, <laughs> um, I know absolutely not. I would not want any cop taking any kind of pill. Uh, I feel like they already have the power. They clearly are getting off for blatant things. Breonna Taylor's murderers are still free. So absolutely not. I would. Not. Okay. Um, Dominique, question for you. Um, you, the character Robin is really interesting to me. On one hand, she's doing what she's got to do to help take care of her mother and all that. But on the other hand, she's a drug pusher. How do you reconcile? <laughs> How do you reconcile that? And like, what resonates with you with Robin? It's so interesting because like the first time when when the storyline started coming out about what's going on, like a like a ex like veter- like a veteran and a, and a cop and a teen dealer, and I'm like, who who is who's this teen dealer? Because I don't know what they're talking about. Because um, I never it never crossed my mind that Robin was. A, a dealer at all I didn't think she was a drug dealer I I'm not I don't know I must have been blinded by all the good things that she is and the the true nature of who she is and what she needs and what she thinks she has to do she's 16 she just turned 16 years old her mom is sick she doesn't have a dad you know what I'm saying and uh if she loses her mom she has no one she has nothing so what is what else is she going to do and at the same time, there's cops taking a pill too, not to throw Joe under the bus, but you know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's too late. It's too late. The bus is coming. <laughs> yeah, so um, um, no, I didn't have to reconcile at all. I actually didn't. I didn't think about it. I, you know, I just thought about who she was and all of the things that she was she was trying to do. I mean, the fact that she's able to to see people for who they who they truly are, who they really want to be, as opposed to the facade that they've given, just like she tells. Frank, you know, uh, why is he a bad guy? Because he's done some bad things. You do bad things too. And she's not saying he's all good or you're all bad. She's just saying everybody does it, you know, but she looks past that to see who Frank is and she looks past that to see who Art really is. I'm sure she did the same thing for Newt and for anybody else that she comes in contact with. Gotcha. So I'm sure you all have, uh, you both have gone through a number of interviews where you're asked, you know, the same questions. What power would you like and all that? So I'm going to flip it because I don't don't really like doing the cliche stuff. I'm actually going to give you both the superpower to convince people. So now that you've got it, tell the people out there why they absolutely must watch Power Project on Netflix. Dominique, if you can go first. Oh, my God. You absolutely must watch Project Power. Project Power. Ooh, my bad. <laughs> Project Power. Um, um, because this is uh, an opportunity given to um, to see a young to see a young black 
like girl take up space in that way. I'm obsessed with Man on Fire still to this day with Denzel and Dakota Fanning and Natalie Portman in in um in the professional and but we never see black young black girls take up that space. So taking me taking me as much as I can out of that out of the idea and just focusing on the character and who she is. I just think that like we're asking for support, we're asking for diversity, we're asking to be seen in all the multifaceted ways that that we have to offer. And I think this is one of those opportunities. You know, and then it has Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon Levitt. So <laughs> and Machine Gun Kelly and Rodrigo and just so many cool people. Could you be Vance? Like, come on. <laughs> Joe. Well, she said she wants to take herself out of it. I'll, I'll put it back in because to me, if there's one reason to see this movie, it's, it's for her. She's my favorite part of this movie. And I, as, as a fan of actors and acting, it's always exciting to see just a, a brilliant young artist emerge like this. And I'm fully convinced that Dominique's going to have a long career ahead of her. I'm so, so happy to have just gotten to collaborate with her and become friends I'm speaking about you in the third person, like you can't hear me, but it's really true. She, she's, uh, she's really someone to watch. And so, yeah, if for no other reason, just check out this brilliant young artist, watch Project Power. Thank you, Joe. Well, uh, I want to thank you both uh, for taking the time to speak with me today. Dominique, I cannot wait for you and Judas and the Black Messiah. I saw that trailer with the one teardrop, and I was like, yep, that's the one. <laughs> um, Joe, thank you so much. I am such a fan of yours and just the artistic talent you bring to the table and how you uplift creators. Um, and I hope to chat with you uh, for the trial of Chicago 7 as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, hey, the people are still waiting for that Nightwing spinoff. So <laughs> I still believe. Okay. <laughs> but thank you so much. Cheers. If you'd like to see the rest of this interview, you can do so by visiting the YouTube channel of the African American Film Critic Association. I'll post the link in the description. And you can also find a link to my review if you're interested in that as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.